Hey guys, today we're going to start looking at capacitors in circuits. Uh, we've already learned a lot about capacitors. We're only going to be using parallel plate, um, which is what we have mostly studied. Um, so the ideas and concepts of capacitors should be familiar to you. Now we're just going to apply a wee tiny bit of circuits to them. This is what a capacitor in a circuit would look like. Um, you've got a battery here that provides some amount of EMF which is basically just a potential difference. And you've got a capacitor plugged in over here. So what happens is charge flows from the positive terminal of the battery, assuming conventional current, around to this plate of the capacitor, which is gonna start off giving it a small charge Q and it's going to keep gaining charge, which will build up there until you get to some large amount of Q. And this is going to happen until this plate, the positive plate, has the same potential as the positive terminal of the battery. So we'll have V at the positive terminal equals V at the positive plate because we know capacitors have their charge spread out until they are the same potential everywhere. And all of this wire is conducting as is the plate of the capacitor. So it all evens out to be the same potential. The same thing happens for the rest of the circuit. The um, negative terminal of the capacitor will have charge flowing from its terminal or its negative plate all the way to the negative terminal of the battery until those are equal. And that happens because this plate exerts an electric field on that plate, making all of the charge move. And this takes a little bit of time because current has to flow and current is charge divided by time. So there, there are some time variables with circuits in capacitors. They don't start off with the maximum amount of charge. It takes some time to get there. We're going to look at that in RC circuits on another day. But for today, we're going to consider capacitors um, after a long time, which is whenever it gets charged fully up to its uh, maximum charge. And the way you know the maximum charge is based off the capacitance of the capacitor. Because if you remember, Way back in the day, unit one, the capacitance of a capacitor is its total charge on one plate divided by delta V across it. Here, delta V is the same as the EMF. So um, delta V equals EMF of the battery. Therefore, the capacitance equals Q divided by inf or sorry, EMF. I always read it as EMF as a person learning physics in high school. So charge is going to flow around um, the circuit until we reach this Q value, at which point the um, voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the voltage across the battery and everything will be in electrostatic equilibrium which is where conductors have all their charge spread out so nothing moves anymore. And at that point, no more current goes through the circuit. The capacitor gets completely charged, and then everything is still, nothing happens. There can't be any charge or, or current through the capacitor itself because it's an insulating material inside, whether that's air or a vacuum or a dielectric. Um, there's not actually charge flowing through the capacitor. What's happening is charge is building up on one plate, which pushes that same uh, sign of charge off of the other plate. So what's really happening here is not current moving through the capacitor, as in charge carriers themselves are not moving through the capacitor. The, the current inside there is zero. But on the other side, things are getting pushed to have total current. So as soon as everything's at uh, electrostatic equilibrium, the current stops, current is not moving, everything is still. 
And we already said that the voltage across the capacitor is going to end up being the EMF of the battery. The voltage across the battery, same thing. Now, when you look at capacitors, um, they can be uh, joined in circuits in either series or parallel. And when you join things in series or parallel, you end up with um, a different capacitance or like an equivalent capacitance for the circuit, very similarly to the way we did resistors. We could take a whole bunch of resistors in a circuit, add them all up, and get a total resistance for the circuit. We can do the same thing with capacitors. We'll get um, a total capacitance. It is not quite the same as resistors, though. Don't assume that it's the same as resistors. So the way that charge is going to flow here in series capacitors is it's going to go around the circuit. Charge will get to this first plate. And you'll end up with a total of positive large Q on that plate. Now, that is going to drive a lot of charge out of this other plate till it reaches net charge of negative Q because things are going to be equal. That negative Q is left because the positive Q is leaving this plate. It's abandoning it. And it's going to make it to the next plate. So the next plate will also have positive Q. And the one after it will have negative Q. And the charge that was on this plate, negative Q, abandons and goes to the next capacitor, positive Q and negative Q. So the thing that's staying constant here is the Q on the plates. Q stays constant. And from Q, you can calculate the voltage drop across there. I'm going to make this smaller so I can do my derivation over here. So we've got each capacitor there, each one. I'm going to represent by CI. That just means iterate through one, two, or three. It's the index. CI equals the ratio of charge for all of them charges, Q, divided by delta V. So for each one of these things, you can calculate the delta V for that one specifically because the delta V is going to change over those. And overall, you know that the total delta V has to be equal to the EMF of the battery because of Kirchhoff's loop law or just because you're aware that that's a property of circuits, however you want to think about it. But the voltage total is always equal to the EMF there. So um, we can solve for the individual voltages for each capacitor and add them up. The individual voltage for each capacitor, VI, equals Q divided by capacitance of that capacitor. So the sum of the voltage across the capacitors equals the EMF equals the sum of Q over CI. I'm going to go ahead and expand that out for this particular circuit. You've got EMF equals um, change in potential for one plus change in potential for two plus change in potential for three equals Q over C1 plus Q over C2 plus Q over C3. And for a, to a total circuit, you know the total circuit should be or should have capacitance equals total charge divided by delta V. So if you were going to look at the total capacitance of this thing, you know here that the total voltage has to be EMF. Um, so you can solve for the EMF there. You get EMF 
equals Q over total capacitance. Now we'll plug that in right over here. For EMF, you say Q over capacitance total equals all of these things, Q over capacitance 1 plus Q over capacitance 2 plus Q over capacitance 3. All of those Qs will cancel out. Let's see. I will erase them and put 1s because you could divide everything there by Q. And you'd get that the total capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals, which is this lovely equation right here that is on your AP Physics 2 formula sheet. It says 1 over the capacitance of a series set is equal to the sum of all of the reciprocals of the capacitors. And that is uh, mathematically opposite of resistors. Resistors in series added and in parallel, the reciprocals added and you took the reciprocal again. For capacitors, the reciprocal thing happens in series. Which you may guess means that for parallel um, capacitors, capacitors placed in parallel, it is simply going to be the sum. And here's why. We know across all of these points, the voltage has to be the same. We already discussed that with resistors, so I'm not going to discuss it again here. But each of these has a delta V. All of them are the same, and they are all the same as the EMF of the battery. So we can use that with the capacitance equation. Capacitance equals charge divided by voltage and say that each capacitor has some charge, but they all have the same um, voltage across them, the same value, which is the um, value of the battery, the EMF. So each capacitor has this, this equation, which you can solve for um, the charge on each capacitor. Charge equals capacitance times EMF. But anyways, what we need to look at here is the total capacitance. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so that I have some room to work. Okay, so the total capacitance equals the total charge divided by the delta V of the circuit, which is the EMF of the battery, like so. What we're going to look at here is that this Q is the Q total of all three capacitors because charge is spreading out on all three different capacitors. When we worked with it in parallel, it was one capacitor pushing charge to the other ones, so we just counted the um, charge on the first plate that was receiving current. Here, we've got three different plates receiving current, so we're going to have to add up all of their charges to get a total. Adding up all their charges uses this equation, so you get the sum of Q I um, divided by inf, which equals the sum of C I capacitance for each thing times inf divided by inf. Every term here is multiplied by inf or EMF. Sorry, keep pronouncing it wrong. So those all cancel, and you get the, the total capacitance is simply the sum of all the capacitors. So in parallel, you literally just add all of the things up. And here's what that equation looks like on your formula sheet. It says that capacitance in parallel is simply the sum of all of the capacitors. I is, again, an index that you iterate over. Um, you just add up however many capacitors you have. All right, last task for today is finding a, um, an equivalent or total capacitance of a circuit. We will use similar methods to resistors. Um, if it's a complicated thing, I would draw out the line diagram, which here would look like starting at the positive terminal of the battery right there, the positive 12 volts, going around to the first capacitor like this with three microfarads of capacitance, moving through to a parallel that's got two different capacitors. One is five microfarads, one is one microfarad. Continue on to the negative terminal. However, in this 
particular circuit, it's very, very easy to see what's in parallel and what's in series, so you don't have to do this. Um, again, it's totally up to you. Let's take a look at calculating it. We'll start with the thing that's in parallel because you can't add the series to the parallel till you've evaluated the parallel. In parallel, you add the two things up. So we do five microfarads plus one microfarad and replace that whole section with the equivalent capacitor. This one's still three microfarads. This one was five plus one for six microfarads. Continues on to the zero side of the voltage. And then in series, you have to add reciprocals. So you do, sorry, trying to move my stuff around because I'm running out of space. And there we go. You add the reciprocals, so you get one third plus one sixth equals, what is it, a half. And then you gotta take the reciprocal of that, which is two. So these two capacitors together could be replaced by something with a total capacitance of two. And that is in microfarads. Cool beans, cool beans. So, now that is all the question has to do, find the total um, equivalent capacitance. Using this idea, you could figure out um, all of the charges on these capacitors. So this first one was two, or this bottom one was two microfarads. And you know that the um, EMF for that battery is 12. So you'd say two microfarads equals Q over um, 12 volts. Now, to simplify the math here, because I don't want to deal with it, but I do want to continue on with the example, I'm going to make all of these regular farads instead of microfarads. Um, microfarads is a much more reasonable um, unit for capacitance. It's closer to what actually occurs in real world, but for maths, sake and learning sake. I'm going to make these regular farads for a second. So you get two farads equals Q over 12, therefore Q equals 24 coulombs. So each plate here has 24 coulombs. Now we got to take that and apply it to the previous circuit. Across a series set of uh, capacitors, you're gonna have the same charge everywhere. You got a positive Q and negative Q, same positive Q, same negative Q. So each one of these things has a Q equal to the previous capacitor, which is 24. Q equals 24. From these things, using capacitance equals Q over V, you can calculate V equals Q divided by capacitance. So here, Q divided by capacitance is 24 divided by three is eight. And this one's 24 divided by six is four. This capacitor right here, which I'm gonna highlight, is the same as that capacitor right there. So all the information just transfers. This one, we had collapsed down from this uh, parallel set. So we're gonna have to take our information here and apply it up there. Our information here is that charge is 24, voltage is 4. Um, so across these two things, the current got split. So the charge is getting split. It's not the same across each thing, but the voltage from here to here has to be the same. So each one of these, um, that's not microfarads, each one of these will have a voltage of 4. Voltage of four. So we can calculate charge from that. Um, charge equals capacitance times voltage. Up here, that's four times 20, char or sorry, four times five, which is 20 coulombs. And down here, it's four times one, which is four coulombs. 
And as a sanity check, you can see those two charges add up. 20 plus 4 is 24, equals the same total charge as you had on your equivalent capacitor. So the process is extremely similar to working with equivalent resistance and moving back up. Now you're just working with capacitance. The things you got to remember are that charge stays the same. It stays constant in series and voltage varies. And in parallel, voltage stays the same and charge varies, which is uh, basically the same as resistors. So the equations are swapped in that parallel just adds and series has reciprocals but the idea of voltage staying the same in parallel and changing in series is similar all right i know that was there was a lot probably um, tomorrow it'll get a little bit worse because we're going to look at rc circuits that have both resistors and capacitors Again, we will have test on a Tuesday, so review will be Monday. You'll have to take your test during your class time um, and have everything submitted within the proper time slot. So please be ready and prepared for that. Again, email me if you have any questions. Let me know if you need help. Um, yeah, have a great day.